DBJ, and these are my top six best RPG ideas that never work. Now, I gotta preface this by saying that it's not true that they never work, but these are like the best ideas that come across in novels and graphic novels and books and TV shows and all kinds of things, plays and movies, and you, you look at them as a GM or a player, and you're like, man, I would love, I would love to be part of that. Like, I would love to incorporate that in my games. Um, hey, as a game master, you know what? My players would really love this. Or as a player, you see it and go, man, that would be a great idea to base a base a story or a campaign around it. And invariably, they break down. They don't work. And these are the most. These are my top six most awesome ideas that require such a level of buy-in by everyone in the group that invariably they break down and do not work. All right, and I'm not saying that these are the are the worst ideas. I think these are the best ideas and come up with really great story elements, but man, it just takes too much work to get them off the ground. All right, my first one is, is a real simple one. Um, and this is something that can be inserted in any kind of genre. Whether you're reading a book, you see a TV show or a movie, you see this so often. But it doesn't work for some reason. And uh, essentially, it's non-lethal combat. It's it's conflict combat that furthers the story. Uh, let's pick a movie like Braveheart. Okay, um, Mel Gibson. He's you know he's uh, William Wallace, and he's a Highlander, and they're having these uh, these Highlander games where they're like tossing logs and rocks and all kinds of stuff and he takes a rock and beans his best friend right in the middle of the head with a rock and like almost knocks him out and then his friend comes and grabs him and wrestles him to the ground and blah 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 and like a, an old Ander Wood video boom here go the player characters going from 0 to 60 you know, I draw my sword. What bonus do I get? Blah, 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 blah. And you're like, that's just part of the, you don't need rules to narrate a non-lethal fight amongst people. It's like the, it's the classic barroom brawl. It's the two brothers wrestling on the, on the ground. It's the, um, it's the good cop, bad cop having a dispute, and they both decide to get into a fist fight or something. It's the the um, uh, one player character does something so revolting, the other player character who's very sensitive to it comes up and slaps him across the face like you should have never done it. Or the you know one player character is is honorable and lets the evil person you know, leave, and then the other player characters, you should have killed him or something, and the evil person draw in the group draws their sword and holds it up to the throat of the good guy, and the good guy just stands there with his head, a tear in his eye, knowing that, you know, the, the right thing to do should have been to, to kill the bad guy, but just could not bring themselves to do it or whatever. Narration. Story. Building tension. Later on, maybe in, in the story... They come to heads again, and the tables turn, or whatever. That non-lethal conflict and combat. And the reason why it doesn't work is because, invariably, the first thing people do is look down at the character sheet. What's my bonus? A-hole's not going to slap me in the face. I get a dodge bonus and blah, 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 blah. Anything written on your character sheet, to me, represents full-out life-or-death skill and ability. Okay, so when a parent sees a small child running towards them and tackles them, the parent's not going to dodge with a plus three bonus to get the hell out the way. It's not like there's a bullet. They get tackled by the kid. They fall down. They wrestle around. Ha ha, tickle, 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 whatever. When a, a loved one comes up to them and wants to slap them across the face for something that they've done, which we've seen 
plenty of times in TVs and movies, they just let it happen. That person needs to let out their, their aggression. They're not really trying to hurt you. They're just trying to express themselves. And that's the first thing. That's my number one best RPG idea that just does not work. It's it trying to insert non-lethal conflict, physical conflict, without having it escalate, but its use is to further the story. All right, my second one uh, is uh, The Hero and Company. It's where you have a situation like uh, Buffy Vampire Slayer, um, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, where you have highly unique character, a, a, a highly unique character, maybe two, and the rest of the players kind of play like the entourage. They're like Robin Hood, and the, you're like the merry men to the Robin Hood or something. And um, it's very difficult to have a story like that because let's say you have, you're playing uh, Star Wars. And the Game Master says, well, I'm only going to allow two Jedi... One of you can be well-skilled. The other ones, you know, you're going to be like a Padawan. You're in training. You just discovered your ability. Everybody else has to play somebody else. you got to play a merc, a, you know, a smuggler, blah, 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 a techie, whatever you want to call it, uh, a senator or something. You're playing somebody else. And what invariably happens is that we have this image of what happens in these types of situations, right? So... The, the bounty hunter and the smuggler go off and shoot up the bad guys while the one Sith agent comes in and then the Sith and the Jedi have a duel against each other and it doesn't work in that kind of situation because the supporting cast players, they're not going to voluntarily step aside and say, well, there's a duel between the good, you know, between the Sith and the Jedi, we better stay out of it. That doesn't make any sense because they're going to say, well, what about my turn? Like, when do I get to shine? And secondly, most players don't want to, will not give up the opportunity to allow them the equal opportunity to engage in physical conflict along with the other player characters. So, for example, you've got your bounty hunter and smuggler ready to go, you know, guns blazing. They're not going to say, you know what, I'm not going to shoot the Sith guy because. I think the Jedi and the Sith should just fight on their own and I'm just going to step back for whatever narrative reason and just step out of the combat. You're going to say, well, why? My character's a bounty hunter or a smuggler. Like, I not only would my character shoot, I want to shoot. Like, I don't want to sit back, be in the game and go, oh, time for me to check out. But the other thing, too, is that you, you get this unequaled yoke kind of thing, like where it feels like one character is more powerful than another, or the super special character doesn't feel special at all because they're just lumped into this group. So, like, the hero and company just does not work. Now, you have other things, like I mentioned Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, if you've got one Vampire Slayer, what does everybody else do? You, you know, well, I'm the, I'm the Slayer, so I get to kill vampires easy, but everybody else gets to play a character that doesn't have those special abilities. Now, in the case of Lord of the Rings... You know, you can you can make the case, well, there's a bunch of special characters. There's Gandalf, there's Aragorn, there's Boromir, you know, there's the Hobbits. You know, somebody's got to play uh, Bilbo with the ring, you know. Okay. In Lord of the Rings, that problem was solved by splitting everybody up. Okay, here's Gandalf coming along. Oh, what? he falls down the pit and fights the Balrog. So Gandalf's doing his own thing. And then, oh, here's Aragorn fighting alongside, you know, the, the elf and dwarf. Well, they get to do their own thing because they'll easily outshadow um, the, the hobbits. So that was solved by splitting the party up. And that's, in many ways, that's eventually what happens. The party gets split up because some people become more special than others. And the hero and company idea just does not work. And it sounds cool. I tried to run a game like that where I kind of, I wanted to come at it from a different angle. So I used, um, um, oh, what's the vampire book where it's a, uh, based in the Middle East? Uh, not the Dark Ages. 
something. Anyway, there was a young prince. The the um, desert empire was sacked, and the entire you know um, empire was covered in sand. And the young prince uh, was traveling with the the princely entourage, like an architect and and uh, uh, astronomical wizard and shape changers and all this kind of stuff. And so the quote-unquote special character was actually the weakest one. All the other player characters were, were like the you know special snowflakes. They were the powerful ones. And so the youngest character and least able was giving orders to all the other ones. It worked a little bit, but it, it, again, it suffered from the fact that you know you had this one person barking orders to everybody else, but at the same time, since they, they weren't the most powerful... And I did that on purpose to try to mitigate that, that everybody else seemed super special. Anyway, the hero and entourage just does not work in RPGs, even though it works awesome in books and movies and graphic novels. Great to look at, great to read, great to imagine in your head, but just does not work at the table. Uh, my third one is politics. Um, staying home. Duty, legacy, blood. You know, all the... It just does not work. Uh, Game of Thrones, Spartacus, uh, uh, a short-lived one-season show called Camelot, which is like a real realistic view of um, King Arthur. Uh, there was another show, I think it was two seasons long, called Rome. It's... you got to have a lot of buy-in from players and the GM to run a game like that. Um, political games are rough because... As awesome as they look on television, like Game of Thrones, where you have um, factions and politics and backbiting and stuff, at the R as an RPG at the table, it, it it can fall flat because all the the um, conflicts and rewards normally attributed to role playing games don't exist in political games. The lack of treasure, the lack of new and exotic locations, um, new and dangerous creatures, um, the danger that characters are put in. All, all of a sudden, a lot, the, the gold, the magic, the, the gifts given, all that stuff starts to disappear. Because what ends up happening in political games is that you have this, you're, you're making power plays. You want more influence than someone else. You want to stop someone else's influence. You are, it's more talky-talky than, than anything else. And so, invariably, it starts to break down into, well, why am I here? And player characters, um, players are notorious, not player characters, but players are notorious for wanting to walk away from situations they don't feel comfortable in or feel like they can win or are bored with. They will always go over the horizon and bump the edges of your setting when they don't feel like doing something, you know why? My, I, I'm playing. I my player character doesn't have any uh, loyalty to any one faction, and the game master's sitting here rolling their eyes like, "Oh shit." Okay, I made sixteen factions, and this player char this player can't pick one. They have to play that one rebel that's not devoted. Okay, fine. All right, all right. I'll let you play the character. Um. All right. So here's the political thing. Well. My player char character, my character doesn't want to be involved in politics. Really? Really? Like, you're really going to purposefully sidestep the whole political game that I set up by having someone who's not part of any faction and doesn't care about politics? Re I'm telling you, even if no one says that out front... They're, they're waiting for their chance to step off stage left. Like, they're just like, ugh, I don't... And, and the buy-in in, in terms of a, a political game is that you need the players to be invested by blood and duty and legacy to, to, to be emotionally invested to go, well, my, I am the 10th generation of, of a knight, so I will never let my, the honor of the knighthood go down. You know, I am the third in line to be king, and if the two, my, my uh, brother and sister ahead of me are dead. I can ascend to the throne. Maybe I can arrange to have my brother and sister assassinated and blah, blah, blah. 
great ideas. It just does not work without serious buy-in. All right. Um, number four is is kind of a uh, conglomerate of fight another day. Number four is like fight another day is the idea that the players are invested in and the game master wants scenarios where completely destroying and dismantling the evil is not the main focus of the story, although conflict with evil is. Okay, so your classic four-color superhero comic books um, and Saturday morning cartoons do this all the time, right? So Mumra arrives and the Thundercats get together. Mumra wants to raise a big giant evil creature out of the swamp. The Thundercats show up. They save some villagers um, living in the swampy area in the trees. They fight off the giant monster. And what invariably happens? Mumra's on the horizon and goes, Hey, you Thundercats, I will see you uh, again until next time. And the Thundercats all get together and raise their fists in the air. And they're like, Hey, Thundercats, ho, we've done it again. And they let Mumra go. And player characters invariably will not let that go. They will hunt your evil uh, NPC down across nations until they are dead. And you can throw all kinds of um, of distractions and complications and obstacles in their way, but they will not let it go unless they have buy-in. That fight another day. Now, incorporated with this number four is redemption of evil. All right, so redemption of evil is the idea that you have... Um, an evil protagonist. They're the one, I mean, evil antagonist. The ones that are causing all the troubles in, in, the, uh, in the world. They are the ones that are creating situations where uh, the, everything that they're doing, the player characters are, have to fight against. So whether it's a person that's cursed to be a werewolf or like the Medusa that was cursed by, you know, Aphrodite or... Um, an evil lich has gained power, but the reason that person turned to the evil side to gain power as a lich is because their family was killed and their people were horribly enslaved by this one king who the player characters think is, is nice and kind, but didn't realize the great evil that they caused before. So the lich creates this big giant army of goblinoids and other monstrous creatures. They come to assault the main city. The player characters fight against the Lich. You find out this backstory about how the Lich was almost... This is the only way they could regain their honor and destroy this so-called evil king who committed these great sins in the past. And the oh, player characters couldn't give a fuck about that. They're just like, kill the Lich, take the treasure, get rid of the thing. You have to have, have such buy-in that the player characters are like, we can save the soul... Of the Lich King, we can have them turn their power against themselves and 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 um, ask for forgiveness of their soul. It's the redemption of evil. It's the, what, the big evil is my brother. I didn't know that was him. I'm going to save my brother. Come on, player characters. Let's not kill him. Let's convince him to do the right thing. It mm -mm, couldn't give a fuck. Could not, could care less. You, you put a big bad in front of players, and they will kill it. They will destroy it. They will stomp on its bones. They will set its flesh on fire. They could care less. Unless they have great buy-in. Unless they are immersed in the game. Unless they say to themselves, Okay, the, the idea of this, hey guys, you know what, let's all work together. We did find out that the king that, that we think is nice and lawful stuff, maybe they... This king needs to be brought to justice, even though it was ten years ago. They, he needs to, you know, pay for what he did to those villagers. And the evil lich, we need to stop him, but we have to get to his stronghold and talk to him. Maybe there is a way to, you know, for redemption or something. Mm-mm. Player characters are notorious for not even, never even picking up on a thing. The evil princess that turns into the werewolf, pff, let's get some silver and kill her. So what? So what? You know, the let's search for the remove curse spell that in the scroll that we're going to need to save the villagers from the, 
from the evil werewolf and the princess doesn't know she's turning into a werewolf and blah 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 great story but hard hard to get across all right um number five is eternal sacrifice of self now you will see this more often than not in samurai japanese themed and cultural cultural styled games and what i mean by eternal sacrifice of self is um 47 ronin story it's the the idea of mad max it's the the idea that the character or characters despite all evidence to going off into the sunset with a happy life make the choice not to it is the um i can become king ultimately rich and very famous but instead due to whether it's an emotional conflict and they feel like everyone around them will die whether it is i'm not worthy to receive this honor uh whether it's i have such a dark secret i could never be in the public uh, whether it's the story of the 47 Ronin who broke the code of rebelling against the orders of their own daimyo or king to come back together many years later, assemble an army, overthrow the evil king, and then sit down and ki commit um, seppuku, a ritual suicide, to atone for their own sin of not following the orders of the evil king to um, to enslave and oppress and murder and torture their own people. So they rebelled against their own people. And this is the real thing. They rebelled against their own king to free their own people, knowing full well at the very end of it, we're going to kill ourselves. And there's one civilian... Um, who did not know of their plan, completely disrespected these samurai, who at the time believed them to have been completely dishonorable, found out how honor-bound they were that this civilian killed himself at the um, shrine of these great samurai, and that one civilian was buried with them because this civilian showed such honor in the face of death to um, uh, make amends to being disrespectful to those samurai. Does not happen in any other kind of game except specifically those kind of games. You don't see player characters doing the eternal sacrifice. No, I don't want the magic sword. I am giving it to the king. My quest was to return the flaming, holy, plus five, vorpal, intelligent, you, you, you know, 15 other pages of extra magic item uh, qualities to the head of the knight's order. It's not my sword. It belongs to the head of the knight's order. I would never take that. Or all the gold, the gold goes to the people. It doesn't go to me. It goes to the church. I'm, I'm going to give it so that back to the the princess who was um, exiled from her kingdom so that she can once again, uh, you know, rule or whatever. I would never take such a thing. What? Uh, go to a um, a party and be knighted or something? No, my no. I am on a dark path for if I were to accept such a thing, it would turn dark in the hands of my character. I must travel the road alone with only my backpack and my sword and blah. Mm -mm. People take, they will take anything they can get, whether it's a giant size favor or a big ass sword or a couple of more magic items or to learn an ancient spell or something, they're going to take it. You're not going to see uh, an evil wizard go, what, is that a spell that summons Tiamat? I'm just going to burn it. I'm not going to keep that thing. What is that, a spell that, that will give me ultimate power? Throw it in a fire. We're going to have to dump it down inside of the, you know... The, the the big volcano or something, the one ring, I'm keeping that shit. I am not giving it up. I've got, what, invisibility? Maybe later on I'll find out what other abilities it has. So what, I'm being tracked by evil. 
I can kick their ass too with my invisibility ring. You're not going to get the that sacrifice of self. It's something that doesn't work unless it is specific in the context of the game and that the players buy into it as a... It's almost like anti-rewarding to make the story. Lastly, this one is of quite general... I have seen it happen, but it's one of the best ideas. My last best idea that just does not work. And it is self-discovery and metamorphosis. And what I mean by self-discovery and metamorphosis is that one or more of the player characters goes through such a change, such self-awareness, such a dramatic turn that they become almost unrecognizable as themselves as the story goes on. Again, unless this is stated up front that this, w this is a thing that I want my character to go through. The Game Master says this is a thing that each player character will have their story arc. Unless it's stated up front, this... And the players buy into it, it does not work. Here's what I mean. Let me pick a classic movie like uh, Terminator and Terminator 2. Sarah Connor, in the first movie, is starts out as the, the wimpy, dodgy, I'm scared as hell, quite, quite stereotypical um, waitress outfit with the pink lace on it and the... Hero's going to save her, and they have just enough time to have sex in an old, you know, motel room, even though he's probably been shot and got a couple of broken bones and bruised. We have just enough time to slow the music down so we can have a nice little sex scene, and I'm just going to run and run and run, and does she help at the end? Of course, she gets a little bit stronger at the end. Come on, soldier, we can do this at the very end. Hit the button, eek, crush. Then we go to part two. And when we see her in part two, she is kick ass. And we were like, yes, that is a great story. And wait a minute. She's not the same character. She's got like, she has languages. She's got like martial arts skills and weaponry skills. She's got stealth and... Uh, and intrusion skills, breaking and entering, knows electronics, knows about guns, intimidation and interrogation techniques, you know, contacts to to uh, criminal elements and block. Whoa, is this a higher level character? Kind of don't recognize this person from before. Is it sweet? Yeah, but you're like, hmm. And that's the idea. Of that would be, let's take. Let's go back to the classic paladin and the knight. And we, we start the story out with the paladin and the other char player characters. And somehow in the story, uh, an evil presence corrupts the, the government and eventually disbands the knighthood. And the paladin becomes, must go on the run with the other player characters. And the paladin begins to lose favor with what he's doing. And what happens... You've got to atone. You're not a paladin anymore. You're hanging out with assassins. You're not playing your alignment. You're going to lose your paladin abilities. You just blah, 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 blah. Let's focus on all the negative stuff. Instead of going, man, what kind of arc would that be? You know, would, would, my, would my paladin change into something else like an Oathbreaker? Or become another character type altogether? Some kind of avenging angel and who, who uh, fights to free his people in the dark and is still a paladin but is using different techniques, almost like a Batman-type character where they would love to be in the open and love to bring back the knighthood but are forced to engage in guerrilla tactics and guerrilla techniques to perform something. And then, and will those other player characters accept that metamorphosis, that change, that... That self-discovery of life is not the way it used to be. My rogue is can no longer be, can no longer hide in the shadows, but now is a member of the, the parliament and must use my roguish skills to engage in diplomatic things 
and not backstab people when I would really want to and changes the nature of the character. Sure, do they have the skills and will they need to be used that way? Yeah, but changing the nature, um, the bard ends up becoming, you, you know, um, a great leader or something like that where the barbarian ends up um, finding out that you're really the son of a great noble and being invited into the noble house and changing the nature of what a barbarian is in a medieval setting as they are the the Tarzan brought back to um, Greystone Castle or something. Metamorphosis and change are great ideas. Best RPG things, but it just never happens. Uh, invariably, we look at the rules and go, well, the rules don't say you can... You know, you're acting out of your alignment. Um, that's not really in the book. But they make great ideas. So anyway... Uh, these are six of my, my top six best RPG ideas that never work. You know, everything from dramatic, non-lethal combat to, um, you know, the hero and the entourage, um, politics and the Game of Thrones, uh, self-discovery and, uh, redemption of evil to fight another day, um, the eternal sacrifice, all those things and more. Anyways, DBJ, as always, me ranting and going off on some other tangent or whatever. Um, but thank you very much for uh, subscribing to my channel. I'm, I'm real pleased that, you know, little old me can give um, some people out there little sparks of inspiration. Um, hell, even sparks of uh, conflict and uh, an argument. So uh, thanks, guys. And as always, create, don't destroy, and try to come up or think of some of your own best ideas that never work. I'd love to see a, a, a um, some people submit some. Maybe I'll do a, um, a follow-up video and just hopefully list some of these ideas so people do try to incorporate them in a game and make successful games. I do feel that all the ones that I named have been done successfully somewhere and are being done on a lot of the uh, actual plays, but they are few and far between, and so it's always special. And it's always a treat when you see something like that. Um, so thank you very much. As always, create, don't destroy, DBJ, and I'm out.